autosomal DNA and successes, finding unknown family and discovering which ancestors provided your DNA. The agenda cover a bit of information on autosomal DNA, its inheritance, and a little on chromosome mapping to find your common ancestors, also some autosomal statistics and many wonderful success stories. So what is autosomal DNA? You have 23 pairs of chromosomes in your body. The first 22 are numbered 1 to 22. There are in pairs, one from mom, one from dad. Chromosome number one is the largest, where 22 is the smallest. They are ordered in that way, from largest to smallest. <clears throat> the other 23rd pair is the X uh, for women. They get one X from mom, one X from dad. And for men, you get one X from mom and the Y from dad. Those are our sex chromosomes. Autosomal DNA is the random combination of all genetic information passed to us from our bloodline ancestors. This is why we look a little bit like relatives, but not totally. Therefore, it determines our unique identity and appearance. As you can see from this graphic, the young man at the bottom inherited the ears of his maternal grandfather and the hair from his father. So autosomal DNA inheritance can go back at least six generations anywhere on your pedigree chart, sometimes further, and that is if you have an endogamous line, that is cousins married cousins. We find that in some cultural groups such as Jews and Mennonites and sometimes just from families not moving very far and living in the same area for a great length of time. So our chromosomes come in pairs, as I said, one from each parent, and all are shuffled during meiosis. Therefore, mother is already has a chromosome, let's call it chromosome 3, that is shuffled, and father has chromosome 3, which is shuffled. But when they decide to have a child, again, it is shuffled. And with each child, they are shuffled differently. So each child inherits different segments from mom and different segments from dad. Sometimes the same, sometimes different. The X chromosome inheritance is unique, however. Males inherit from their mom's side only and through selected ancestors. Females can inherit from both parents as they receive an X from mom and an X from dad, but again along selected ancestors. This is a chart showing male inheritance courtesy of Blaine Bittinger. And as the male receives his X from mom, you can see the, the pink and the blue squares. Those are the ancestors that can contribute to his X. As you will notice, there is no two blue sections together. That is because a male cannot give another male the X chromosome. Females have a little more work to do since we get an X chromosome from dad and mom. But again, uh, no two blue squares are together because a male cannot give an X to another male. And these are representative of the people who can contribute to a female's X chromosome. So why do we want to map our chromosomes? And mapping our chromosome just helps us determine the DNA, which DNA segments came from which ancestors. It also helps us determine where you and a new match share a common ancestor. It organizes matches information because often um, a person who tests their autosomal DNA will have hundreds to thousands of matches and it's a lot of information because there are various segments on each chromosome including the X. There are four simple steps to mapping, and these are the beginner simple steps. First, you need to understand a few basic terms. Then test a few known cousins, if possible. If not, you can manage, but it is easier by testing cousins. Then you compare your DNA segments with your matches, and then compare pedigree charts to find the common ancestor. 
So let's look at these. The major term you must understand is called half identical region. Our DNA is a long series of four bases adenine, cytosine, guanine, thymine, and we use the letters A, C, G, T for ease. And if for some reason in the graphic you'd like to understand what connects, it's the straight letters T and A connect together and the curved letters G and C connect. That's always the case. Each chromosome is a pair, one from each parent, as I previously mentioned. Matching on one of the pair is called half identical because you have a pair of chromosomes, so if you're matching on mom's side, that's half identical, not full identical. So the goal is to determine the half identical regions or sections where two or more people match each other on the same chromosome at the same segment. And that would mean they have a common ancestor, which could be on mom's side or dad's side. So let's look at an example. The blue background on this chromosome browser is me. I tested my cousin Daniel and my other cousin Gerald. In my family, it's Gerald, not Gerald. And as you can see, Daniel is the orange segments and Gerald are the light blue segments. On chromosome 9, both of these people have a segment that is relatively large and in the same region. It does not have to be exact, by the way. Now, in the upper right-hand corner, it has a link that says, View this data in a table. If you click on that, you will see a chart of all the chromosomes and where you match. This is for Daniel, and page 2 at the bottom right would include Gerald. We are interested in chromosome 9, so what I did for simplicity is to take the information up for both people and put it in the next slide. You'll notice here the chromosome is listed, the start location of the shared segment, and the end location of the shared segment, along with the centimorgans. The larger the centimorgans, the more closely you are related. And I don't want you to think of centimorgans any other way at the moment. This is just the beginning level. The number of SNPs are also given, but that is not important to what we're doing today. Therefore, taking Daniel and Gerald's chromosome 9, we see where they overlap and where they match me. As you can see, Daniel and I are first cousins once removed, which means we have more segments than Gerald and I, a second cousin. So the centimorgans are 72.94 as opposed to Gerald and mine for 32.41. Now, what we need to do to determine half identical region, to determine which chromosome from mom or which from dad on chromosome 9 um, gave this information, we have to compare Daniel and Gerald. If they match each other, all three of us have a common ancestor. If not, one of those segments is from my father's line. And one of the segments is from my mother's chromosome 9. So in comparing them, we see there is no match. Gerald and Daniel are not related. Therefore, like I said, one is on my father's side, one is on my mother's side. This is the reason to test cousins, because if Daniel and another person matched, then I know it's on my dad's side, and Gerald and another cousin is on my mom's side, as you'll see in the chart later. Finding common ancestors. First, we test the known cousins to separate the segments of your pedigree chart. And then we download the matches list, download the segment list from the website that we're given, determine the half identical regions, which we just did in the previous example, and share our genealogies deep and wide. That's all there is to it on the basic level. So let's look at testing known cousins. This is my chart, and the first cousin I tested was Doug. He and I are first cousins on my father's line. Therefore, if Doug and I match someone, then I know that it's on my dad's line. Simple as that. Providing that other person and Doug match, and that both of them match me in the same segment on the same chromosome. 
Well, that cut my hunt for the common ancestor down in half. But since it goes back six generations at least, it could still be a little work. Therefore, I tested Dan, who is related to me through Benjamin and Tina. In my family, it's not Tina, it's Tina. And Dan is the person you met earlier. So you can see he's on my father's line. If Dan and I match someone, or Dan, Doug, and I match someone, and all three, four, three or four of us match each other, then I know I to look at Benjamin and Tina and further back. That reduced my pedigree hunt a bit more. Now, to look at my mom's side, I tested Gerald. You can see now that Dan and Gerald are on two separate chromosomes in the pair as I previously showed you, chromosome 9. Gerald and I met someone. I looked from John and Ervilla back. Well, not to be outdone, I tested Robert, and we match at Lowry and Mary, and that would help if Robert, I, and a third party match someone. I know the look from Lowry and Mary on the way back. Now, usually you're related to a couple unless you test some family member that separates the husband and wife. And then you can look at one person and further back. Here's an example of the matches spreadsheet. And on these slides, it's usually looking pretty crunched because it is quite collapsed here and um, much larger. As you can see, I removed the matches name and the email addresses. But on here, uh, I have added two columns. Column I for known relationship and column J for ancestral line. You can add any other columns you wish. But what I do is once I determine that a person is related to me and I know the common ancestor, as you'll see down here on line nine, um, this person and I are second cousins and our common ancestor is RGG born 1811. Those are the initials of my ancestor, Robert Gray Gilmore and his wife, Helen Storier, who, and her birth date, 18, which is off the page. That helps me keep track. And then if I find another um, person that is in the same area, they match the same cousin, I know where to look. The matches segment spreadsheet is different. And you can uh, order this by chromosome, start location, end location, which is what I've done here. It doesn't come this way. I removed the matches name, of course. But if you look at lines 11 through 14, on chromosome 1, you have uh, four people who start basically in the same area and end basically in the same area on chromosome 1. Even though the centimorgans are a bit small, I wanted to use this as an example for you. If all four of us match all four, then we all have a common ancestor. However, it's possible that some are on my mother's side and some are on my father's side and not everyone matches everyone. If so, we know where to start looking. <clears throat> so the idea is to determine HIRs, half identical regions, with known cousins and record where you match those known cousins. So let's look at I and Doug and we match on chromosome 12 along at, with Dan. And if you look at the combination, and Dan matches Doug, of course, but you have to look at the most distant start and the most recent end to, to be able to declare that that segment came from a mutual ancestor. And in this case, it would be Benjamin or Tina further back. You cannot take anything but the highest start and the lowest end. You must do that to be certain that section came from that person because Doug and I could have matched um, on this chromosome and it could be different relatives. Same with Dan and I. So determine from whom you inherited the segment. By testing cousins and knowing where you all relate, that helps. So now you move on to HIRs with unknown cousins. You compare your segments with people that you don't know 
as well as your cousins you do know. And in this case, you'll see Tara and I, Tara and Doug, Jane and I, Jane and Doug, and Doug and I. And we all match generally in the same location on a fairly size, a good size um, segment. But what we have to look at, does Tara match Jane? So in emailing her, or in this case it's um, 23andMe and you can check on their website for that, I want to see does Tara match Jane on chromosome 8, roughly the same start and end position. And sure enough, they do. So all four of us have a common ancestor somewhere. And I know, since they match Doug and I, that it is on my paternal dueling lines from half of my pedigree chart back. After that, you need to share your genealogies, your online tree, or your detailed anatophils for sections of your pedigree chart. If surnames do not match, check locales. Collaborate on needed research. If you found no common ancestor, you may have missing ancestors within the 6 to 12 generations that this test could cover. Siblings, children, grandchildren, etc. for unknown direct ancestors are important to track and to share. A female married a name that one or both of you do not recognize. Or the, the centimorgan segment is too small, or what we call IBS, identical by state, which means it's just a little piece that traveled through time from a very distant case, and it would be too small for you to determine a common ancestor. And there's other definitions of IBS as well, but in general, think of it as that. Autosomal statistics. So why don't all my cousins match me? It's frustrating, but it is because um, autosomes mix and you lose some DNA and, and retain the uh, additional parent. So let's look at this, and you can understand that the average DNA shared from mothers, fathers, and siblings is 50%. You get 50% from mom, 50% from dad. Grandparents is roughly 25%, along with grandmothers, aunts, uncles, half-siblings, double cousins, first cousins. Um, and it's not going to be exactly 25%, no. As we go down one more generation to first cousins, half aunts, uncles, whatever, is 12 and a half. And it continues rapidly down until third cousins, very little percentage. Another way of looking at it is your second cousins are closer. You have a 99% chance of matching them. Third cousins, 90. But notice, fourth cousins, a 50-50 chance. You could test all your fourth cousins. You probably won't match them all. And, it, and each generation down, again, it gets smaller and smaller. So what about success stories? That's the reason we're testing wonderful success stories. In this case, um, Jim had his dad test at Family Tree DNA, and he ended up meeting, the dad ended up meeting his half-sister Susan for the first time and wrote, to Family Tree DNA saying, I thought you may like to know that my dad met his half-sister Susan for the first time tonight. I attached a photo. It would never have happened if not for Family Tree DNA. Thank you. And permission where I use names is given. Now, Rusty and his son and his half-sister. Rusty was a father, so I want you to look here. The blue background would be Rusty. His son is all the orange. And Susan um, is the blue. And you can see how the chromosome browser looks like. A lot of area cover. Dustbin baby. Some of you may have seen this in the news lately or years back. This is a woman who was adopted and never knew who her parents were. She finally decided to do a DNA test for she did uh, an autosomal um, DNA test, and she did a mitochondrial DNA test. 
It so happened she matched someone on the autosomal DNA test, and um, that person realized that she had two uncles that could be related to um, Michelle and tested one of them and they found that yes this is Michelle's father and she has been able to have a wonderful relationship with him but she's still looking for her mom. <clears throat> and Debbie Kennett's dad matched a person in Canada. They didn't know where because most of Debbie's family has stayed in the UK forever. However, uh, they did lose track of one cousin who showed up in Canada soon after he became missing in the UK. After research through genealogical um, sources, they discovered that that ancestor, which is a cousin of her dad, moved to Canada and now the family is whole again. And here's the start and stop position and the centimorgans. X chromosome cousin matching is very interesting. This is Rebecca and I, and as you can see on the X chromosome, remember you get it only from specific ancestors, the start and stop position for Rebecca and I. Now, it, it's very wise to use huge uh, amounts of centimorgans on the X. It uh, can be a bit deceiving. So I focused on the 39.54 uh, centimorgans, although the 14 still would come from the same ancestor, possibly. What I did is I took Blaine's chart and I plotted myself. Now, I knew that Rebecca uh, was connected to me through Lowry and Mary, but I didn't know who gave us the um, segment. So in plotting myself, my mother, my grandmother, my great-grandparents, I found that I ended up with Mary and Lowry. When re plotting Rebecca, we found out that it goes the same way, although Mary is the only person who could have given Rebecca the X. Therefore, our X on that segment came from Mary. Not Lowry, because Lowry could not give his ex to Robert. Proving oral history is really a success. This is my husband's line. And two sisters on the left, um, Vivian and his mom, Angie. I had a family story that there was a third child. Uh, born six months before their mother died and because the uh, father had to take care of two young children anyway, he gave the third child to his best friend. When I went to Italy to visit the cousins there, they told me, oh no, that's not the story. The story is that mom got out. Mom had an illegitimate child with someone else. Well, when you have two stories, it's important that you prove one to be correct, if possible, or at least disprove what you have. Therefore, when I did a autosomal test on my husband, um, and I did an autosomal test on Vivian, I discovered that the story in Italy was true. Vivian is a half ant, not a full ant. So. It, the other success story would be correcting lineages. I had a Gilmore second cousin who tested with Family Finder at Family Tree DNA. My grandmother and her grandfather were siblings. We didn't match each other. We also knew that both families had illegitimate children. Her grandmother um, had one illegitimate child while married to her grandfather. The family knew this, and he wasn't the person at the end or the beginning. My grandmother had an illegitimate child before she married my grandfather, but my mother was the oldest child. And since family doesn't don't always give you um, the full information, and back in certain times they tried to hide some of this, I had to be sure that my mother was legitimate 
for that um, the other the, the grandfather of my second Gilmore cousin was illegitimate. So we had tested other people that descended from this line. I matched the other Gilmore cousin. She did not. She was a half match to her Gilmore uncle. And it was through her grandmother's line. So she tested the male descendants of the two illegitimate children um, birthed by her grandmother on the white chromosome, and they matched each other. So what is this telling us? That the two children of her grandmother were by the same unknown father. Now she has the correct surname for her father. Correcting lineage is success, even if you think you have it right before you test. And here's Pearl's children. Robert Jr. and Margaret were from the Gilmore line. George and Lowry were not. Now, when you look at this, the eyebrows of Robert are different from that of George and Lowry. Foreheads of Robert Jr. and Margaret are higher. But only after you have DNA can you draw those conclusions. Finding father. Jeffrey was born in Cardiff in 1945 and adopted by the Harris family. While watching BBC documentary about tracing root, he decided to locate his parents. His mother was on his birth certificate and they met in 2011. Mom gave a clue that father was a Scotsman. In 2010, he and his wife visited Who Do, Who Do You Think You Are in London and tested for a Y67 chromosome marker. He matched a person in Texas and was only off by one marker, and the surname was Butler. A new clue came up. The family friends said mother uh, said that Jeff's father was an American serviceman billeted at Jeff's grandfather's house. Others confirmed this. Sheila, Texas cousin, came to the UK and showed Jeffrey how she and Clifford of Oregon were connected to him, possibly, or how they were connected to each other, at least at that point in time. And Cliff has two half uncles in the service at the right age. So the investigation continues, and autosomal DNA testing will help that. And here's a picture of Jeff and Cliff. Pretty much alike, but while at Who Do You Think You Are, I saw a picture of Cliff's brother, Joe, who looks even more like Jeff. So testing tips. You must attend lectures, webinars, and read books to improve your knowledge of genetic genealogy. This is a fast-moving field. Keep up with it. Understand each type of DNA test as each provides matches for different parts of your genome and your pedigree chart. Formulate your goals before testing. Determine which test best suits your needs. And just a little cartoon for you of how genetics work, if you'll notice the child. Questions? And thank you. If any of you have interest in the handout that I gave for the presentation, you can email me at alicino at heavennet.com. The email is at the bottom of this slide. Thank you.